The Tech V452 is very easy to set up and operate. Aside from loading the ribbon and media and checking the position of the paper sensor, there are no printer settings to worry about. In other words, how the printer performs day in and day out is mostly dependent on how you set up your software and drivers. The first part of this video focuses on the basics of setting up your printer. with the dip switches on the back of the machine. These tiny switches control either communication or service functions. As you can see here, there are eight switches and we are showing the arrangement as the printer ships from the factory. In this case, all the switches are off except for number two. What exactly do these switches control? Numbers one, two, and three are used only if you intend to print using a serial cable. In that case, you'll have a 9-pin cable that plugs into the serial slot on the printer. The top two switches determine the baud rate, which controls how fast data is being sent to the printer. The factory setting is 9600 bits per second. Switch number three controls parity. While most computers have a wider range of settings, these are the only ones permitted on the printer. The key to making serial communications work is to ensure that your computer and printer are set to exactly the same values. Because switches 4 and 5 are rarely used, we will skip those. The last three switches control the printer's mode of operation. In order to print anything, all three of these switches must be turned off. However, occasionally a technician or user may have need to activate one or more of them in order to perform specialized procedures. We will talk about that later on in this video. So, in general, when the printer arrives from the factory, it is ready to print. Of course, you do have to have your printer connected to your computer, either using a serial cable, as we have already mentioned, or a parallel cable, if you prefer faster performance. Before we get to actual printing, we need to put labels and ribbon into the machine. To do that correctly, we want to make sure that the paper sensor is positioned so that it can pick up the gap or black mark that separates one label or tag from another. The sensor assembly itself actually includes both sensors right next to each other, the black mark sensor here, and the gap sensor here. Since the 452 is a center justified machine, positioning the sensor so that it is a little left of center is usually ideal. The upper and lower sensors move independently, so it is important to make sure that both are located in the same position. Fortunately, lining up the sensors is quite simple, as both the upper and the lower sensors lock into one of five numbered positions. Let's look at the lower sensor first. Right now, the sensor is located in slot number one. As I push it to the right, the sensor moves into positions 2, 3, 4, and finally 5. The last position puts the sensor just to the left of center, a good location for most labels. If we close the upper sensor, we now want to make sure that we put it in the same position as the lower one. So again, right now the sensor is located in slot number 1, but we need to have it in slot number 5. So just as before, we will slide the sensor over until it locks into position number 5. Once the upper and lower sensors are in the same spot, the labels can be loaded into the printer. 